jai jai re aban man dir vai jai jai re aban man dir vai jai jai re aban man every day i wake up in the morning and one of the first things i do is brush your teeth <laughs> I'll go outside my apartment and draw a kolam, which is a design made with rice flour. The tradition for doing kolams was to feed the ants. This comes from Buddhism and Jainism, where even the smallest creature on earth was venerated. We took care of them. Rice flour. symbolizes fertility and prosperity and the harvest rice flour epitomizes the abundance of south india tell me a story about food my name is shobha narayan and i'm a food writer i'm the author of monsoon diary a food memoir which is the story of my life in southern india told through food Acclaimed food writer Shobha Narayan lives in the very heart of South India, in Bangalore. Over the last decade, the city's emerging middle class has enjoyed economic prosperity and embraced progress. Still, Narayan savors the age-old traditions of the kitchen, where enduring recipes and aromatic spices connect her to both family and an ancient past. I live in a high-rise building, just like any other. Malini, let's go. On a typical day, I take the elevator down. I say good morning to the doorman. Good morning, Mohammad. Good morning, madam. Walk across the street and buy fresh milk from a cow. <laughs> One of the pleasures of living in India is the juxtaposition of the very modern with the very ancient. You know, when I was a little girl, I used to get the milk like this from the cow. After my years in America, I thought I would come back and all of those traditions would have disappeared. And then, lo and behold. Here they are. Oh! I think it's important for kids to know that milk comes from cows, not from the supermarket. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. <laughs> I boil the milk and I use it to set yogurt. The fascinating thing about India is to see how our food plays out in this new modern context. This is Goddess Lakshmi with a ladle in her hand. overseeing the kitchen ultimately it's the spices that define our cuisine an indian cook would be lost without the spices i have a little box that i call an anjala putti and in it are the spices that are essential this is black mustard seeds cumin seeds fenugreek seeds no indian woman would travel without it and when i was a bride and i went to my husband's house to set up i had in my suitcase this little box and you can cover it and you carry it with you it's like gold The irony is that the only spices that are native to India are turmeric and pepper and salt. It was the Arabs, the Mughals from Persia, a strong population of Muslims. They brought a certain richness and elegance. The use of nuts like cashew nuts, rich halims, and the biryanis in which you have saffron and ghee. Exotic spices like nutmeg could be traced. to Tunisia and Ethiopia it was the portuguese who brought green chilies which is so prevalent in south india in all our curries the strange thing is the culture whose cuisine we have absorbed the least are our last invaders the british we have taken almost nothing of british food no shepherd's pie no yorkshire pudding the opposite has happened now chicken tikka masala is supposed to be britain's national dish